Okay, okay, okay. So if you're here and you are watching this video, you must be dreaming of the digital nomad lifestyle. In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down a couple of steps that you can follow A to Z, how to nomad, how to work remotely. We're gonna be going into the money side. We're gonna be going into the nomadic side. We're gonna go into all of the steps that you need to follow to live out your dream of being a digital nomad. So let's get into it. <laughs> Hey Freedom Fighters and welcome back to another video. If you are brand new to my channel, my name is Jess. I am a digital nomad living here in Bali, Indonesia. And today's video is going to be all about how to digital nomad. So there are so many different paths that you can take to live this type of lifestyle. I've broken this whole term of digital nomad down into a couple of different steps so that you can kind of look at it from a broader perspective, decide your own path and still get the same type of nomadic results that you're obviously here looking for if you're watching this video. We're gonna be diving deep into both sides of the digital nomad term, right? So we're gonna be talking about about the money side and what it's like to actually work digitally as well as the nomadic side where you have to kind of make some lifestyle changes and how to get you to the point where you're able to live remotely, you're able to travel the world and do whatever you want when you wanna do it. So we've got the digital side where you are working completely from your computer, you're able to bring an income in and completely support yourself from your laptop anywhere that you want as long as you have Wi-Fi. And then we have this nomadic side where you are living remotely anywhere in the world. You're working in libraries, you're working in co-working spaces, you're working in coffee shops. You're living in foreign countries and you're able to travel and do whatever you want as you please because you have the flexibility to work from anywhere. And before I continue this video, I'm so sorry for these like crazy noises that are going on in the background. I live in Bali, Indonesia and so We've got the straight up jungle behind me and so you might hear some birds, you might hear some wild boars, you might hear some bugs and things and craziness that you've never heard before. We're gonna get through it and that is just part of the journey, baby. So, the first step to living this digital nomad lifestyle is acquiring skills that will make you money online. So there are a ton of different routes that you can go to build skills in order to make money online. But first you have to really figure out what you're interested in and what route you wanna go down because there are so many ways to make money online and when you are new to this space, you're gonna wanna do them all. But what I would recommend that you do is you find one that you're actually interested in and then commit to it for 12 months. Because I see so many people getting into this, they wanna be a digital nomad, and then they start finding all of these ways and they start dabbling in a million different things and they don't actually see success in anything. That's a mistake that I made and it's taken me a really long time to realize that you really have to focus in on one specific skill. Now there are tons of different ways to learn these different skills that will make you money remotely. But the first thing that I would do is I would go onto YouTube and I would start to research different methods of online businesses. And we're gonna be going into some of the most successful and the most popular ways that you can make money online in this video but you need to do a little bit of research yourself find out what you're interested in as well as what type of barriers to entry so maybe some businesses you have to invest a little bit more capital in whereas in others you're able to get hired on by some type of firm or do freelance work we're gonna get into all that but the first thing is learning the skills to actually make the money online university and colleges are not designed to create this life of nomadic living yes you can go to college you can go to university to a acquire skills to make money online, there's definitely much easier, faster ways that are so much better, in my opinion, in order to pursue this life of a digital nomad if that's really what you want. So you are actually sitting here with the college dropout and I think I'm doing more than fine, right? And you'll find that a lot of the people that are digital nomads have dropped out of college and that's completely okay, right? As long as you're doing it for the right reasons. If you wanna go to college and you wanna pursue a specific thing, that's amazing. If you wanna be a digital nomad, there are other ways to go about it. So there's tons of info products online that will teach 
teach you how to make money online. And I do have a bunch of the courses that I've taken down in the description below that are going to give you the skills in order to start living nomadically. If you do have any questions about courses, I have taken so many online courses in order to master this industry in the digital space. I've taken Amazon courses, I've taken Shopify courses, I've taken Facebook ads, Instagram, YouTube, all of the things I'm like this big giant book of like digital knowledge and so if you are looking for some route and you know what you want you've done research on YouTube and found a direction that you want to go into and you aren't sure who you should trust for taking a course to learn more about that skill shoot me a DM leave me a comment down below and I'll give you the best advice possible that I can I always try to be super genuine and honest on this channel because I've been in this space for a while and sometimes it is hard to find people that you can trust because info products are also a business online. So just be weary of it as you get into the space. There's also a couple of other platforms that you can get online courses from. You can go onto Udemy. Again, YouTube is a great place to start to find what you're interested in first. So start on YouTube. Find people that are doing what you want to do. Research Facebook ads, research Shopify, research Amazon, research coding, research all of these different methods of making money online and figure out what works best for you. So step number two is to actually get paid. So we've took all this time to acquire these skills. Now how do we actually turn those skills into a living? And there are a couple of different options that you can take to actually start making money online. So the first way is to get hired in for a remote position or for a firm. Now, the hard thing about this is that you are competing with people all over the world, and trust me, you are not the only one that dreams of living remotely, so you really need to become an expert at whatever you want to do if you wanna work for a firm remotely. One of the positives about working for a firm is that you know that you have a stable set income, you know that you're bringing in a certain amount every single month, you'll probably have some type of schedule or structure to your your job you'll have to work certain hours or do specific things every single week or every single month in order to stay working for that firm and so this is one of the most stable options to going completely nomadic another way that you can start working remotely is by simply talking to your employer now if you have a job where you are working mostly from your computer and you've been with them for a long time you might be able to work remotely they might allow you to take calls from a different country they might allow you to work from your computer from a different country and keep your same pay. Now I will say this doesn't happen very often because the nine to five system is not set up to allow you to travel the world, but in some cases, depending on your employer, you might be able to convince them to keep you and let you travel the world. The next option is freelancing. So maybe you've developed a skill like Photoshop, video editing, graphic design, or copywriting, any type of skill that you have that can fit into other people's businesses online. You can actually post your skills on sites like Upwork and Fiverr. As someone that works online, when I hire a virtual assistant, I hire a graphic designer, I hire anyone to do any type of freelance work with my business, I always hire in third world countries because they're working for way less money, right? So I can get the exact same graphic, the exact same thing designed for much cheaper if I'm hiring someone that's working in the Philippines or somewhere where the currency is much lower than the US dollar or somewhere like Australia or Canada. So that's another thing that you should know. You really need to become a master of this craft so that you're able to compete with people that are doing things for a cheaper cost people are willing to pay a bit more for quality work. So just become a master at whatever you are doing online and figure out how to connect with people through Facebook groups and through other platforms so that you can start to get freelance work from all over the world and you don't have to go searching for it. It starts to find you because of the name that you've created for yourself and the business that you've done in the past. Now the last way to turn your skills into an income online and my personal favorite is to start an online business. Now this is one of the riskiest ways, but in my opinion, it is the most rewarding way to make money online because it allows you to truly be your own boss. Now with this, you may have to make some sacrifices. You're probably going to have to fail a couple of times before you see any success. And at the beginning, you're probably not going to be making very much money, but this is so rewarding because it's one of the most scalable ways and the only way that you're really able to create a large income online is if you have control 
over it. You're not working for salary. You're not working for contract work. You're doing a business that is actually scalable online. There are a ton of different business models that you can start online. Some of the most popular are starting an Amazon FBA business, starting a business drop shipping, starting a marketing agency for Facebook ads or for Instagram. You can start a business selling info products, starting a YouTube channel, starting affiliate marketing. There are so many and I have a ton of information down below on courses that you can take to master skills, to start businesses in any of those specific fields. And so if you have any questions on starting an online business and you're wondering like what's gonna fit most to your life and your career, definitely leave me a comment down in the description below or shoot me a DM and I can try to push you in the right direction because I've dabbled with all of these methods and I kind of know what works for me at this point and so maybe I can help you decide what also works for you. Some of the benefits to starting your own business rather than working for a firm or doing freelance work is that you're in complete control of your business and it allows you to be a lot more scalable and it allows you to create a larger income over a long period of time. So you're not stuck in a specific level of income or salary, you're also able to be more scalable, right? So you can you can take on more work and you're also able to start outsourcing and bringing on clients of your own. Now that being said, there is a lot of risk with starting your own business. It's gonna be one of the most difficult. It's definitely not gonna be an easy path to success, but trust me, if you do it, once it's created, especially if you do a business that is passive, it is so, 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 so worth it. So now that we have acquired skills, we're making money online, we're at the point where we need to take that leap and take that change and step into the nomadic part of being a digital nomad, right? So this is where you have to start to change your lifestyle. So I've broken this category down into a couple of different things that I have found to be a little bit challenging as I transitioned my life from being grounded living in Los Angeles to living nomadically in Southeast Asia. And one of the first things that I had to overcome was like financial barriers, right? So a lot of us have house payments, we have rent payments, we have car payments, we have all of these things that are tying us down to a specific area. So the first thing you have to do before you can go nomadic is you have to cut off all of the ties to anything that's holding you down financially financially, right? Getting out of all the payments that you have that are tying you down wherever you're living. So I have someone renting out my Jeep, they're making all my payments for me and so I don't have to worry about that and I was able to get out of my apartment and all of the things from the other side of the world. So figure out how you can eliminate any financial barriers that are holding you back from being completely nomadic. The next aspect of being nomadic that you have to take into consideration is the relationships that you have in your life right now. A lot of the people People that I've met traveling, including myself, were faced with a really difficult choice between the relationship that they had back home and living the free lifestyle that they had always imagined. And sometimes life kind of brings you to this crossroad and it tests you and asks you, do you really, really want this? And sometimes that means making space for the opportunity to live remotely and oftentimes the people we have in our lives don't have the same vision and you have to choose whether you're willing to sacrifice your dream of living nomadically to stay with them or you're willing to cut those ties and move on at least for the time being in order to really fulfill this life of travel. It's really not an easy decision and I can't say that I would be sitting here today if the decision wouldn't have been made for me. The person that I was with saw that he was holding me back and decided to let me go because he was very stable and grounded and as much as I wanted him to have the same vision as me, that just wasn't in his cards and so I had to split those ties and it was one of the most difficult things that I kind of had to go through and part of me still kind of wishes that he was here with me today but the other part is just so grateful that I was able to be strong enough and go through that break up in order to really fulfill my own life. Hopefully you can find someone that is willing to take that leap of faith and jump out into the world with you or you'll find someone while you're traveling that's already living that lifestyle that kind of meshes up with you and your hopes and dreams and lifestyle and ambitions as well. So just something to keep in mind about being nomadic. Not everything is 
flowers and sunshine, sometimes you have to make really difficult decisions and choices in order to actually live this lifestyle. And remember, you're also gonna be away from your family, so you might not always be able to make it back for the holidays and for the little things in life that are so beautiful to be around. So just know that there are some sacrifices that you're going to have to make. But to be honest, in my opinion, it is so, so worth it. And finding yourself and finding who you are and what you want and making yourself happy is the most beautiful and empowering thing that you can do. Sometimes we have to let go of things that we don't want to in order to find who we really are. And if anything is really meant to be, it will be and it will find its way back to you. The next thing that you're gonna have to take into consideration is how attached you are to things that are in your life. So if you are used to living a very stable life, you have a house or an apartment, you probably have a ton of stuff and living on the road, you're just not gonna be able to bring all of that with you. So if you have tools or you have crafts or you have like specific things that are huge and you can't carry in a backpack that you like to do or you like to have in your life that make you comfortable, you really need to take that into consideration before you take off in the world because you might not be so happy when you're staying in a hostel or you're staying in an Airbnb and you're living out of just a backpack. I had to let go of a lot of things, a lot of shoes, a lot of clothes, a lot of things that I was used to and got really comfortable to having in my life, but it's been such an amazing way to practice minimalism and practice this idea of non-attachment to not only people but also to the things that are in my life. Just so you have a bit of an idea of just how much stuff you can take with you. This is literally my entire wardrobe. This is everything that I have with me and it all fits into this one little bag. So if you don't think that you can fit your entire life into a backpack, then being a digital nomad may not really be for you and that is totally cool. But before you decide against it, I would challenge you to try it out, right? Give it a shot because once you are traveling, you start to realize that you really don't need very much and all the things that you do need definitely will fit inside of a backpack. <laughs> And then the last thing that may hold you back from taking on this lifestyle as a digital nomad might be the fear of failure. And I'm challenging you to let that go. Book the ticket, right? Just set a date and decide that you're making it happen. Burn the boats and just go all in on yourself. Once you start taking action, I think many of you will really be surprised with how fast you start going into full speed ahead and you don't turn around. You start making money online because you have no other option, right? Your plane ticket's booked. You're leaving no matter what, whether you have a source of income or not. Maybe you're afraid of traveling by yourself. Maybe you're afraid that you're not gonna be able to make money online or whatever your fear is, let it go because I think that once you step into it and you get to where you're going and you start seeing money come in online or you just take that first step and force yourself to grow in a direction that's going to push you closer to your dream of being a digital nomad, you'll start to see that it's not as scary as you think it is and that it's actually so exciting and incredible to be able to work from anywhere in the world. And so take that leap of faith because you are not stuck. You are just one good idea away from changing your entire life. So those are the barriers that are holding you back from being nomadic. So now you have learned skills to make money online. You're getting paid. You've eliminated all those social and physical barriers that are holding you back from being nomadic. The next step is finding out where you want to go and that's actually the fun part, right? So if you are just starting out and you're brand new to the digital space, I would recommend going somewhere that has a very extremely low cost of living. So anywhere in Southeast Asia, somewhere like Chiang Mai, anywhere in Thailand or even in Indonesia and in Bali are all very affordable places for internet marketers or for people that are in the digital space and it's a great place to start your business because you're able to live extremely cheap. So for example, I'm living in a beautiful villa in Ubud, Bali. I do yoga every day. I eat organic food all the time and I'm living for less than $1,500 a month in one of the nicest villas I've ever lived in in my entire life. So it's a great place to get started. If you do wanna go to places like Europe, you wanna do Greece, you wanna do Australia or these other 
other places that are a little bit more expensive, then work your way up, right? Start in somewhere like Southeast Asia and make that a milestone to get to the point where your business is creating enough income online that you're able to start traveling and do all of these other big countries and big cities that are a little bit more expensive to live. You also need to think about where you're gonna be staying. A lot of digital nomads stay in hostels, which is a great option. It's super cheap. It's also a way that you're able to meet tons of people that are also in the space. You'll learn a lot. You'll probably drink too much. You'll have a lot of fun and it'll be an incredible experience. Or if your business has something to do with YouTube where you need a little bit more personal space or you're just like not in that phase in your life, maybe you're a little bit older and you wanna travel the world but you don't wanna like do the whole party craziness, then get an Airbnb. I rent this place for $350 a month and again, it's one of the most beautiful places I've ever stayed in my life. And so there are so many options, just make sure that you have amazing Wi-Fi, look into co-working spaces, there are a ton of them in all of these digital nomads cities and hubs where you can meet entrepreneurs that are kicking ass making more than six or seven figures and you can learn a lot and as you continue this journey your skills are going to grow and you might find yourself working in a completely different space just based off of the people and opportunities that cross your path while you are traveling so i hope that you enjoyed this video on how to digital nomad if you haven't already make sure to hit the subscribe button down here in the corner over here <laughs> and turn on those notification bells. I'm gonna be putting out new videos on making money online, traveling, being a digital nomad, all of the things every single week. And I hope to see you soon on another video.